Good morning, Nevada and all our neighboring states. I'm Peter Lycopoulos, and this is the January 5th, 2013 edition of Rural Nevada Today. Happy New Year to all of you. I hope that your Christmas was wonderful and helped rejuvenate you for the coming year. Now, 2013, it's going to be a year of great challenges for those of us who love this country and remember what this country used to mean to the entire world. We were the bastion of freedom and opportunity. Twice in the 20th century, we saved this world from tyranny. Then at the end of both world wars, we opened our nation to take in the refugees of the world and make them our own. You know, it's time to start speaking out. It's time to start making a scene. It's time that our priests, our ministers, and our rabbis start speaking out from the pulpit. If we don't start speaking out, we're going to lose what is left of our nation. Demand what you want. Don't take what the stores are trying to shove down your throat. Remember my Christmas story about my wife going and picking up Christmas cards that said Merry Christmas. Make a scene. This is what the liberals have been doing since the 1960s. If you disagree with them, they shout you out as a racist. Now, the big issue of 2013, make absolutely no mistake about it, it's going to be gun control. Now, as of last night, the past day or so, they are saying that the gun control legislation they are going to pass is going to be passed by the end of this month. Now, don't be sidetracked by the fiscal cliff, and we'll talk about that today, or Obamacare. Gun control is the most dangerous issue facing us today. This year will go down in history. It's the first time a civilized nation has full gun registration. Our streets will be safer. Our police will be more efficient. And the world will follow our lead into the future. You want to guess who said that? Adolf Hitler in 1935. Remember, it's morals, not laws, that save this nation. Now, at the end of the 630 news break, I've got a piece that I took out of the Wisconsin Rapids Tribune. It's by an author, Susan Stamper Brown. Will 2013 be the year that we slow moral decline? It's a great piece. I hope you enjoy it. Now, how about that fiscal cliff? What a deal we got. How about this, huh? We got our tax increase. Have us, did anybody get a paycheck yesterday? You're going to have less take-home pay. And we're not talking, I'm not talking about all my audience out there that's making over 450000 all you millionaires that got up this morning to listen to the show. I'm talking about the people making $30,000, $40,000 a year. Did you see your paycheck yet? Yeah, it's, it's a little bit less. So we got all of the uh, taxes, but we didn't get any spending cuts. Now, the current occupant of the White House, he says he promises that he's only starting on taxes. You got more taxes to come. Now, how did our brave Nevada representative vote? No, you know, no surprise here. Uncle Harry, and thank God she's gone, Shelley Berkeley, voted for the bill. That was expected. Sadly, Dean Heller, and I, I got a piece that Dean Heller stated, but Dean Heller and Joe Heck voted for it. The only person in the entire Nevada group, our entire group of legislators that go to Washington, the only one who voted against it was Mark Amade. You know, Jim Gibbons used to joke about the Kool-Aid that they served in Congress. I guess he wasn't too far from the mark. But here's what, here's what Senator Heller had to say. Congress has had nearly a year and a half to work out a deal, but the Senate has waited until the final hours to vote on a proposal. The entire process has been an embarrassment. I hope that Washington will realize that running the clock to the last minute, high drama crises are no way to run a country. Moving forward, Democrats and Republicans must commit to working with each other so that Congress can better serve the American people. Well, Senator Dean, why did you vote for something that they brought up at the last minute? Why didn't you vote no, but you voted yes? He continues, tough times, especially in the Silver State. And ultimately, the Senate did the right thing today by providing certainty for Nevada families and businesses. Today, the Senate came together on agreements on a pro-growth solution that will allow Nevadans to keep... More money they earn in their pockets. Really? Really, Senator Dean? We're going to keep more money in our pockets? I'd like to hear from anybody this morning at 257-5396. If you got a paycheck, I want to know. Did it go down? Did it stay the same? 
But really, Senator Dean, we're going to keep more money in our pockets? While I did not get everything I wanted, bipartisan compromise will allow businesses to start planning for the future and ensure the unemployment benefits extended at the time when so many Nevadans are looking for employment. Really, Senator Dean? How many businesses are closing and how many jobs? They've estimated that this bill is going to cost 600,000 jobs, Senator Dean. By the way, out this morning, not part of the show, but out this morning, we will reach, we'll reach the debt ceiling once again at the end of this month. They're already asking. I heard a figure of $24 trillion debt ceiling that they want to give. My question is, why do we keep voting for these people if they're not going to represent us? This bill was another kick the can down the road. It accomplished nothing. And that statement from Senator Dean Heller was a total fabrication. Everybody got their taxes increased. There were no spending cuts. We don't have a tax problem. We got a spending problem. Like I say, we still got the tax increases, and yes, everybody will see these tax increases. But guess what, folks? Here's the best part of it all. We haven't seen the health care taxes kick in. We've still got that to look forward to. If this conti- continues, the spending, and if they keep printing worthless money, we're going to find ourselves in a very deep recession. Do our representatives think that we are going to be doing better in a couple of months, that we'll be in a better position? We have become a nation of give me's. The thing that nobody is talking about here is how many jobs will now be lost. Another lie on the fiscal cliff from the media slime. And I, you know, I called the Dairy Association. We talked about this. I wanted to know. They they came out and said, and even in the um, Glenn Beck piece that he puts out in the blaze, he goes, the fiscal cliff isn't passed. If this bill isn't passed, milk was going to spike between seven and eight dollars a gallon. That was untrue. The fiscal cliff had nothing to do with price of milk, had nothing to do with the price of food. What did come into effect is the WIC monies may have been cut. They would have been cut. WIC is money provided to mothers who have a hard time supporting their children. Now, WIC funds are for those mothers to buy food. This is money that is also duplicated under ADC in the federal food stamp program. However, once again, the media lied. Milk, dairy, all the other farm products would not have increased. But let's cause panic and let's get, you know, let's get those young families out there calling their senators and congressmen saying, oh, my God, how am I going to feed my kids? I'm going to have $8 a gallon milk. Totally untrue. What we face today will also change. This nation has survived a revolution, a civil war, a depression, and two world wars. We will also survive this faker in chief who presently occupies the White House. Now, what we look like when we come out of this, that's going to be anybody's guest. But I'll tell you what, folks, you better start speaking out when you're in the stores. If you don't see something you like, if you don't see the product you want, say something about it. Now, we'll talk a little bit about normalcy here, okay? You know, celebrate our traditions, our Judeo Christian traditions, and what this country is all about. And one of the things we do have, I got to mention it, I'm still going to go on with my life, but we got to start fighting back. But hey, NFL fans, the playoffs start today. This is wild card weekend. Now today, NBC3 at 1.30, you're going to see the Cincinnati Bengals at the Houston Texans in an AMC matchup. At 5 o'clock, also on NBC3, you're going to have an NBC, the NFC matchup, which is a rematch from last week. This time, Minnesota is going to be in Green Bay. I expect a totally different result. Now, tomorrow at 10 o'clock on CBS 8, you have a AFC matchup of the Indianapolis Colts at the Baltimore Ravens. And then at 1.30, you have two rookie quarterbacks going at it. First time in on Fox 5, you're going to have an NFC matchup of the Seattle Seahawks at the Washington Redskins. Now, yeah, here in the show, like I said, we're going to continue to celebrate the season of the hunt our culture, our Judeo-Christian traditions, our youth, our elderly, NFL football, but mostly we're going to celebrate our God. 
enjoy your games. Don't forget, we got a contest today. If you want to join me, you got anything to say, give us a call at 702 257 5396. That's 702 257 5396. Now it's time for the Gold, Silver, Live Market Commodities Report at the close of business on Friday, January 4th, 2013. Gold closed for $16.57 an ounce, making for a $4.60 increase over last week. Silver closed at $30.38 an ounce, making for a $0.15 cent increase from last week. Now, you know what? This week's Silver and Gold Report was brought to us by Raw Mountain Gold. What can a gold mine do for a county's economy? Round Mountain Gold, a joint venture with Kinross Gold Corporation located in northern Nye County, has been helping the people of Nye County and the state of Nevada for years. Today, Round Mountain Gold employs close to 800 people and is the largest private taxpayer in Nye County. Round Mountain is dedicated to preserving the mining tradition and creating jobs in mining for generations to come. If you are interested in pursuing a career in mining, call 775-377-3137. That's 775-377-3137. Interested in seeing modern gold mining at work? Then call 775-377-3169 for a tour. Or go to nevadamining.org to learn more about what mining does for Nevada. Now, this is just one for you to ponder. You know, those of you who are sitting out in the audience this morning thinking, well, hey, what's Pete complaining about? Government's going to step in. We're all going to be okay. Consider this. Any man who thinks he can be happy and prosperous by letting government take over for him had better take a good hard look at the American Indian. Well, it's contest time, and give us a call at 257-5396 today for the $25, and you can only answer one of them. For the $25 off-the-strip gift certificate, I want to know how many sheep are included in the Grand Slam of sheep. I want I need you to name all of them. Then for the knife from Cool Radiator, which state holds the highest number of Grand Slam holders? Give us a call at 257-5396. We'll take your calls right after this break. Nestled on the Nevada-California border in the Sandy Valley sits Two Hawk Ranch. Surrounded by thick, lush fields of locally grown alfalfa, Two Hawk Ranch has bulk and cubes available. If you have not tried alfalfa cubes, let the good folks at Two Hawk Ranch explain to you the value of feeding your horses cubes and you decide which of these great products you wish to feed your animal. Horse and livestock owners with a great supply of locally grown alfalfa where you can buy direct from the owner. Why would you buy from anyone else? Call Jared or Kale at 702-723-5375. That number again, 702-723-5375. Or drive out the Sandy Valley and follow the signs. You'll be able to see the green fields of Two Hawk Ranch long before you get there. Two Hawk Ranch, they'll always treat you right. I like baseball. I love milk. My milk's low in calories and high in vitamins and minerals. My milk comes from cows in beautiful Nevada. Cows and milk are the power behind the play. Icy cold local milk from your local dairyman gives you that power. Low fat and fat free milk are naturally nutrient rich. Baseball and milk keep me healthy and fit. Quality icy cold local milk from your local dairyman. The power behind the play. The phone lines are open. Call Peter now at 702-257-5396. Well, welcome back to the show, and I got two questions for you. One, for the $25 gift certificate from Off the Strip, I want to know how many sheep are included in the Grand Slam of sheep. I need to give you to give me the name of all of them. And then for the knife, you get a pocket knife from Cool Radiator. I want to know which state holds the highest number of Grand Slam holders. We have a caller. Caller line one, you're on the air. Good morning. Do I need, do How are I you need doing? To answer both questions? No, you can only answer one. So go for which one which one do you want? The the I'll name the sheep. There's four of them. You got it. Okay. The Rocky Mountain Bighorn. Right. The Desert Bighorn. Yep. Stone Sheep. Yep. And the Dull Sheep. Absolutely correct. Now, you're going to get the $25 gift certificate from off the strip. If you had hold on, Jim will give 
your name and phone number, and I'll get that mailed out to you. Okay? Okay. Hey, thanks for calling in. Thank you. <laughs> you still using that beat-up old piece of firewood? The Green Hornet's caught more fish than you've lied about, Gustafson. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's time for the fishing report. Now, out at Lake Mead, anglers continue to find success for striped bass in the Vegas wash, but action slowed in recent days. Now, now cut anchovies have been the bait of choice, but plastic shad imitations are also getting a lot of action. Large mouth and small mouth sheep are still hanging around, but they're also they're keying in on the shad lookalikes. Now, remember, boaters, in an effort to hide this, to hinder the spread of aquatic evasive species, as of January 1st, all motorized and non-motorized vessels able to retain water are now able to re- obtain a display of AIS to Kel. The details can be obtained at your Indow office or go to their Indow site at www.indow.org. Out at Lake Mojave, an 8-year-old boy reeled in a 7-pound striped bass at Willow Beach over the weekend. He was fishing with an AC plug. Right, it, had to be, it had to be a thrill. 8 years old, that that fish had to be as long as he is tall. Now, further south, anglers have been picking up a few small and largemouth bass. They're fishing for grass in the, the they're fishing in the grass beds about 30 to 25 feet deep in water. Now the weather's been nice out at the lake. The water temperatures are a little on the cool side, right around 50 degrees. Now down in Laughlin, Colorado River is providing action for those who are willing to brave the ch- chilly temperatures. According to the folks at Rusty's Riviera Marina. Stacked rainbow trout seem to be schooling. When you're out there, you want to locate a prime spot, stick with it. Now, if you're heading up to uh, Lincoln County, Eagle, Eagle Valley, the reservoir is frozen over. The average ice thickness is about four to five inches. Anglers are encouraged to use extreme caution when venturing out onto the ice. One angler caught a rainbow trout using a night crawl and a small piece of marshmallow while fishing from the dock. Now, if you've got ice that thick, safe enough to... Uh, fish on it, but when you get out there, check with some of the locals to make sure that it stays that way. Also, Echo Canyon Reservoir is froze over, but they're saying the ice is not yet thick enough. Once again, check with your rangers before you go on into the ice. Now, heading into Kirsch Wildlife Management Area up in Nye County, ice fishermen are reporting good success at Hay Meadow and Cold Springs. Ice is four to six inches thick near the dam and along the edges. Now, ice at Dacey and Adams McGill is still too thin to go out on. Adams McGill has some fishable waters near the dike and near the boat launches. The roads are covered with packed snow, but access is not a problem. At the urban ponds, fishing has been good as Indal has had their weekly trout plants. Anglers are finding good success for power baits, night crawlers, and spinners. Now, I am still on this contest. We still have the second part of the contest. I want to know. We, we already found out you got four sheep in the Grand Slam, okay? But for the pocket life from Cool Radiator, which state has the most members in the Grand Slam? Give us a call at 702-257-5396. This week's fishing report was brought to us by Cool Radiator. Is your car's radiator leaking? Does your cooling system need some attention? And with this economy, have you been putting it off? Not doing routine maintenance can end up costing you many more dollars down the road. So if it's been a while since you've had your car's cooling system serviced, or if you're looking for a real radiator shop that can answer your questions, then it's time to stop by Cool Radiator at 3228 Westmead Avenue and let Daryl have a look at your radiator. Daryl will be able to answer all of your questions and explain just how your cooling system works. The good folks at Cool Radiator understand your concerns and they can help. So stop stressing out and stop by Cool Radiator and get some of the small problems fixed before they turn into something major. That's Cool Radiator at 3228 Westmead Avenue, east of Valley View between Sahara and Dion. The phone lines are open. Call Peter now at 702-257-5396. Now, once again, we still got the second question. You may call at 257-5396. I want to know what state has the most members who've, who've gotten on a Grand Slam list that have taken their their Four big sheep out of North America. A little bit of no- news out of Echo Bay Marina. It's going to be closed. Now, it's the northernmost marina in Lake Mead. This is going to close at the end of the month because the National Park Service can't find anybody to operate it. 
Now, officials at Lake Meek Recreational Area announced Thursday that Echo Bay Marina will cease the water-based operations on February 1st, but the boat ramp, convenience stores, and other facilities are expected to remain open. Forever Resorts has operated the marina for the past three years, but nobody has taken on the contract for the next 10 years. The problem is that they're, they're having a problem out with the docks. The water level has gone down, and it's not worth they can't extend it. They're not letting them extend out into the water, so you don't have any place to put these boats. Now, Echo Bay draws about 200,000 visitors per year, and it's it's getting kind of dicey out there. There are only about three or four places out there that you can go out and dock your boat. Now, a decade ago, nearly 300 slips were at Echo Bay, and it was regularly filled with houseboats and other vessels. But ta- the one of the people who work out there said it, only about 90 boats are currently moored. So it doesn't look like anybody's going to be picking up that contract to go out there and uh, fill this in. Once again, give us a call. I still got that question out. What state in the union has the most members on the Grand Slam? Give me a call at 253-5396. That's, two, excuse me, 257-5396. And we got, we got an update on the Wounded Warriors. Now, my wife Angel was in, and we were talking about what we're doing for the Wounded Warriors. She did this group with the Women's Republican Club of Las Vegas. You can donate. We got some donation sites. You can go into Mr. D's on Oki and Rainbow. Donate there. Cool Radiator, stop by and see Daryl. Got Harley Davidson on Sahara and Rainbow. Also, the gun shop, Second Amendment. You can go in there and, and make a donation. Now, Want to mention, too, we were out, we had a chance to go see the good folks at Second Amendment. They got a great selection of new pistols that have come in. Along with the pistols, they got a shipment of ammunition. So you want to step out and see them. They are located at 4570 North Rancho. They're right across the street from Big Dogs. Now, I talked to Khalif out there, and he has, and I had a cup of this, it's great, Jamaican blue coffee. You want to go out there and have an absolutely great cup of coffee, pick up some ammo, Maybe buy a gun or something, but you want to go out and see the the good folks up at um, Second Amendment Gun Shop on North Rancho. So once again, I want to know, come on, guys, this should be so easy for you. Which state has the highest number of Grand Slam holders? Now, when we come back from break, I you know I always peruse other newspapers and look for other things. There is a great opinion piece that come out, and it says, will... 2013 be the year that we slow moral decay. It's a good piece, and I I got a chance to look up this lady's website, took a look at some of her other writings. She writes very similar to the things that I write about, the things that I go in and take a look at. And like I say, with this year coming up, you have to get, you have to start speaking out. You have to be aware of what is going on. Go out there. Be definite on what you want, and just don't take no for an answer. Now we got a caller. Caller, good morning. How you doing today? Good morning, Peter. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? Is it Alaska? No, not Alaska. All right, thank you. Hey, thanks, and have a great day. Bye. Okay, bye now. Anyway, when you're out there shopping, doing different things, if you see something you don't like, this isn't the time to just walk away from it and forget about it. you got to speak out. This is what has been done to us. It's why we cater to the minority part of this country. There's nothing wrong with the country. It's the leadership that we've got. It's That is what we have to change, and we change it by speaking out. Now, we're going to go to a break, but when we come back from break, I'm still looking. What state has the most members in the slam? Give us a call after this break at 257-5396. Eagles fans, looking for a great place for gaming as well as watching all the games? A place where you have daily football parlay cards and gambler's bonus? Then stop by Off the Strip on Tropicana just west of Grand Canyon. Off the Strip has all kinds of football specials including $2.50 domestic draft beer, 10 food items for under $10, and special game fare. So if you're looking for a place that is a step above the rest, then stop by Off the Strip at 9837 West Tropicana. Then you and the Eagles will both have a great season. 
Jumping on a trampoline can leave you thirsty, but most drinks out there are high in calories and low in vitamins and minerals and lack a very important thing. The power behind the play. Milk from your local dairyman gives you that power. Low-fat and fat-free milk are naturally nutrient-rich, keeping you healthy and fit. So after all that jumping, ask for quality, icy-cold local milk from your local dairyman. It's the power behind the play. Visit DairyCouncilUTNV.org. There's nothing like going hunting, whether it's a big game hunt of a lifetime or just a local bird hunt with close friends. Hunts never last as long as you want them to, and when the hunt is over, the only thing that's left is the memory of that hunt. So to preserve those memories, you mount your game, and every time you look at that mount, it takes you back to that hunt, and you remember every detail of it. That's why, with all the time and effort that you put into your hunt and getting that trophy, you deserve the best taxidermy possible. Here in Southern Nevada, that means Scott at Great Basin Taxidermy. Scott can do head and shoulder mounts, rugs, full body mounts, mounts in natural habitat. He also does birds, fish, and small game mounts. So when you need a taxidermist, call Scott at Great Basin Taxidermy. That's 368-1848. That number again is 368-1848. That's Great Basin Taxidermy at 3894 West Spring Mountain Road. Great Basin Taxidermy, creating hunting memories in Southern Nevada since 1988. Scoring touchdowns can leave you thirsty, but most drinks out there are high in calories and low in vitamins and minerals and lack a very important thing. The power behind the play. Milk from your local dairyman gives you that power. Low-fat and fat-free milk are naturally nutrient-rich, keeping you healthy and fit. So after the big touchdown, ask for quality, icy-cold local milk from your local dairyman. It's the power behind the play. Visit DairyCouncilUTNV.org. The phone lines are open. Call Peter now at 702-257-5396. Well, welcome back to the show. We got a caller. Caller, thanks for holding on during the break. Go ahead. You're on the air. Yeah, I'm going to say Nevada. Hey, absolutely. In Nevada. And, and the reason, there's a very good reason for that. Here in the state of Nevada, you have two of the four sheep live. You got the bighorn sheep. Actually, it's the, desert, it's the California bighorn, and we also have the desert. But you get, do you know where Cool Radiator is located? Yes, sir. Just stop in, see Daryl, tell him you knew. You knew about the state, and you get the, the knife, okay? Thank you very much. Hey, have a great day, and thanks for calling in. Now, right. anybody else you got any calls or any comments on this next piece they have coming up, give me a call at 257-5396. Like I said, it's a great piece. I picked it up out of the Wisconsin Rapids Tribune. Now, there's a lady who writes. She's nationwide, so she's, she's a national syndicated columnist. She's also a blogger. If you want to read any of her stuff, it, she does a, a great job on writing on the things similar to what I, I write and talk about here on the show. And it says, write stamper at gmail.com. Her, her is, thing is, write stamper at gmail.com. Now it says, this is a column, will 2013 be the year we slow moral decay? With the dark shadows of uncertainty, Descending upon our hearts, so many at the conclusion of 2012, one can only hope that 2013 will be a year of promise. But even in these dark days, miracles still happen, especially when people are willing to roll up their sleeves and for the cause of freedom. And I guess we've got a caller. Caller, you're on the air. Hey, good to hear hear you on the radio again. I haven't been driving on Saturday morning ah, for a hi. while. How you doing? Good. Hey, uh, you know, you mentioned that about out at uh, the lake where they're closing that one marina and how there's 300 boats can be there and now it's less than 100. Right. You know, it's probably like most of the people I know, they had boats and either they don't have them or they sit in the yard they can't afford to use them. Yeah, and you just had that law passed that goes into effect this year that you can't have gasoline engines out on there so it's everything's changed well, see i miss that i use i hear stuff like that whenever i get a chance to talk to you but wow i never had a boat i always wanted one though well now you're gonna have to go to a different state <laughs> yeah i got a question for you, How sure. would you where would you find what the Indians used to eat out, like in the middle of the desert. I know people see the internet internet and i've gone on there and i've looked up things but it's never really detailed like I'm looking for, you know? Do you have any ideas? Of what the Indians did what? 
you know, what they ate, you know, back in 1820 before the white man was here. Sheep. If you're talking about Southern Nevada, sheep. You also had know. roots. You also had cactus. Well, where, could, where could you find something that could identify that kind of stuff for a person to eat? I I don't know. If you, do you ever go up by Overton? Um, not a whole lot. I usually go up. I got some dirt up more towards Reno and... You know, I look at that when I go up there. I look at it. I'm thinking, what did they eat when they when they were up here? I, I, they I would try co- contacting one of the reservations. Fish and pine nuts, right? Yeah. And it, I, 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 I never did get over the cool radio radiator and get my knife that one few years back. <laughs> we'll stop by and see them. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you guys have a nice weekend. All right. Thanks for the call. You bet you. Bye. Take care. All right, I want to continue with this. With the present darkness is written in our nation's moral decline. Further we get into the moral center, the worse off we are as a people. Further from our moral center, the worse off we are as a people and as a nation. It has taken some time to get to where we're at today. Over the years, conservatives have allowed progressives to hijack the conversation, once again, like I say, about speaking up and our founding principles. Liberals have replaced morality and moral relativism in an attempt to justify their own moral ineptitude. For example, a group recently sanitized the King James, are you believing this? They sanitized the King James Bible from any references of homosexuality and replaced it with their own politically correct titled the Queen James Bible. Moreover, we've allowed liberals to distort our founders' intents concerning separation of church and state. Consequently, players Prayer and most references to God have been banned from the public square. Yet we see no plausible correlation to those actions and the recent mass shootings. Mum's the word when it comes to God. But the roof is raised by the choice, by the right to choose discussions, just as long as a conversation stays within the confines of a human life women should be allowed to extract from their body. But choice flies out the window when the discussion changes to things like what we put into our body, like soda, fat, salts, caffeine. They're all about women's rights until you mention Islamic extremism and third world barbarism in places like Dakar. And then, to them, capitalism is incomprehensible. They take hard-earned money from capitalism is okay. They can take the money, but, you know, they don't want you to make it. Progressive ideology consists consistencies will be their downfall and their ideology will almost certainly crumble beneath the weight of the truth as the Iron Curtain did in 1989. What is wrong with America today is what went terribly wrong in Russia so many years ago when the Soviet Union tried the Marxism way and to go it on their own without God. While many cast blame on their problems on poor economic and political choices, Russian writer and Nobel Prize recipient Alexander Solzhenitsyn blamed it on the fact that men have forgot God. He was right. And the world discovered how wrong Marxism was when men and women who refused to forget God played a momental role in crushing communism in Eastern Europe countries. I remember those of you who were around in the 80s and those who weren't, the fall of the Eastern Bloc started with a working relationship between Pope John Paul II and Ronald Reagan. People forget that. You go into Poland today, there are statues of Ronald Reagan. He's the one who set all of that up, he and John Paul II. Now, the story is told by William Ansey's book, Finding God in Unexpected Places in East Germany. Every demonstration began with worship. She says she's not getting all spiritual here. I'm simply restating history. Small groups would throw prayer meetings, with political di- political dissidents, concerned citizens, and some of those apprehensive Christians. After a period of pray, pastors spoke. Once again, like I said, our pastors, our priests, our rabbis have to start speaking up. Pastors spoke while holding newspapers in one hand and the Bible in the other. After participants went out for a walk outside peacefully through the dark night holding banners and candles. In October 1989, in East Berlin, was celebrating the 44th year of the communist regime. Police were instructed to shoot demonstrators at Libitz, where crowd had grown to nearly 500,000. Thankfully, never, never did. 
Then again, on November 9th, the crowd doubled to a million. It was an unimaginable thing happened. A gap in the Berlin Wall opened without incident, carrying candles. East Germans peacefully filed through the wall and effectively brought down the East German government in the process. By the year's end, multiple East Bloc countries joined East Germany's fate, and by 1991, the Soviet Union had dissolved. Once again, those were Reagan years. Hope sprung internal, and the world has experienced a long-anticipated breath of fresh freedom because people put their faith and their longing for freedom into action allowing the world to witness its miracle. Once again, I think it was a great piece. I wanted to read it to you. If you're interested in her writings, you can go to writers, writer, excuse me, writestamper at gmail.com. She also has a website at susanstamperbrown.com. That's susanstamperbrown.com. She's got a lot of articles, great pieces. I read a couple, and I think I might bring more of her pieces on to the air. But... If you're interested in that, read it. I thought it was well worth reading. We're going to go to break, and then, hey, we'll cover some of the things that are going on around our country today. What can a gold mine do for a county's economy? Round Mountain Gold, a joint venture with Kinross Gold Corporation located in northern Nye County, has been helping the people of Nye County and the state of Nevada for years. Today, Round Mountain Gold employs close to 800 people and is the largest private taxpayer in Nye County. Round Mountain is dedicated to preserving the mining tradition and creating jobs in mining for generations to come. If you're interested in pursuing a career in mining, call 775-377-3137. That's 775-377-3137. Interested in seeing modern gold mining at work? Then call 775-377-3169 for a tour. Or go to nevadamining.org to learn more about what mining does for Nevada. Nestled on the Nevada-California border in the Sandy Valley sits Two Hawk Ranch. Surrounded by thick, lush fields of locally grown alfalfa, Two Hawk Ranch has bulk and cubes available. If you have not tried alfalfa cubes, let the good folks at Two Hawk Ranch explain to you the value of feeding your horses cubes and you decide which of these great products you wish to feed your animal. Horse and livestock owners with a great supply of locally grown alfalfa where you can buy direct from the owner. Why would you buy from anyone else? Call Jared or Kale at 702-723-5375. That number again, 702-723-5375. Or drive out to Sandy Valley and follow the signs. You'll be able to see the green fields of Two Hawk Ranch long before you get there. Two Hawk Ranch, they'll always treat you right. If you want to advertise during this show, call Peter at 882-2865. That's 882-2865. Well, welcome to the show. You're listening to Rural Nevada Today, right here on KDWN AM 720, brought to you by the Dairy Association of Southern Nevada. We've got a caller. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, hello? Hi, how you doing? Pretty good. Uh, I've got a friend. I was telling him about you had some information about a bird-specific virus carried by doves, pigeons, and uh, other stuff, and uh, she was kind of concerned about that. Uh, do you remember what that virus was or where she could get the information? I, You know what? Contact the Clark County Animal Control. They were the ones who put it out. Okay. Okay. Now, the name okay, of it, great. I don't know what it is, but if you if you call on Monday, call the Clark County Animal Control, okay? Okay, yeah, I'll give it a try. Thank you. Thank you, and have a great day. Okay, now here, you know, one of the things that they're talking about with guns, and, you know, depending on which pundit you're talking about, they'll tell you that owning a gun isn't going to help you or whatever, and you've heard all kinds of things going on. And believe me, like I say, the biggest problem we're going to face in this country in 2013 is going to be the gun issue. You know, the Second Amendment... That's the amendment that keeps the other 10 and all the rest in place. Now, this comes out of Butte, Montana. Now, this is a shotgun preteen versus illegal, illegal alien home invaders. Two illegal aliens, Rafael Rendendez, 23, and Enrico Garza, 26, probably believed that they would easily overpower a home alone 11-year-old Patricia Harrington 
after her father left the two-story home. It seems that the crooks never learned two things. They were in Montana. And how about this? Patricia has been the clay shooting champion since she was nine. Now, Patricia was upstairs in her room when she heard the two men break through the front door. She quickly ran to her father's room and grabbed his 12-gauge Mossberg 500 shotgun. Renendez was the first to get up to the second floor only to catch Buckshot at point-blank range, fired from the 11-year-old Necrotch Ames. He suffered a fatal wound to the abdomen and genitals. When Garza ran to the foot of the stairs, he took a blast in his left shoulder, staggered out on the street, and bled to death before medical help could arrive. It was found out later that Renendez was armed with a stolen 45 caliber handgun that he took from another home, another home invasion. The victim was 50-year-old David O'Byrne. He wasn't so lucky. He was stabbed in the chest. He died of his wounds. Ever wonder why stuff like this doesn't make the national media? An 11-year-old girl, properly trained, defended her home against two murderous illegal aliens, and she wins. She's still alive. You know, thought of the day, calling illegal aliens undocumented immigrants, that's like calling a drug dealer an unlicensed pharmacist. A lot of good things happening, but aren't making it into the press. Now, here's something that's got to just impress you. You know, if you thought Speaker Baynard wasn't tough enough, here he goes, and he tells old Uncle Harry to do something that's absolutely physically impossible. But don't worry, folks. I mean, with the use of Obamacare coming through, who knows? There might be a procedure or some drug that you'll be able to take to actually get into that position. And John Baynard, God, he was able, he would, he come out tough. Boy, he did this. He said it twice. Uncle Harry tried hugging him and saying, gee, I only read what they script me, and I didn't mean anything personal. And while it was amusing, I got to say, it was amusing to see Baynard step up. You got to know the frustration that's going on in Washington. Got to ask you one thing, Speaker Boehner. I just, why weren't you so tough on the negotiations on this fiscal cliff? Why did you just let this whole thing go over? And I, I got to look at our 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 con- Congress here, our congressional delegation here on Nevada. Like I say, Berkeley and Reed, you know they were going to vote for the fiscal cliff. Thing. They've been useless. They're, why bother with them? But when Dean Heller voted for this, and then he makes the statement, I mean, he, he comes out with statements that are they're blatantly false. He tells us that, you know, listen to this garbage. He's embarrassed by letting them run the clock out to the very last minute and then forcing them to vote on it. That's no way to run a Congress. That's no way to write laws. Senator Dean, you're correct. But why did you vote for it at the last minute? And then to sit down and say, today the Senate came up with an agreement on a pro-growth solution that will allow Nevadans to keep more money that they earn in their pocket. Well, if you didn't get a paycheck Friday, if you're getting your next paycheck next Friday, you're going to take home less pay. And I'm not talking about my millionaire listeners. I'm talking about the average listener, the average guy making forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year. You're getting less money. A couple of things to watch for that are coming up. The president turned around and said that he's not done with taxes yet. He promises more. Besides a smaller paycheck that you're going to get now, wait till Obamacare kicks in and that, that comes into place. So you got to wonder, why did Dean Heller... Now, Dean Heller, if you, if you remember way back when, Dean Heller voted against the automobile bailout that Bush wanted. This was back when Dean was a congressman. He voted against that. He was one of the few people that stood up and said, this whole thing on this bailout for automobiles is ridiculous and it's wrong. Dean Heller's had a, an excellent record. But now he's gotten into the Senate. Why did he vote for this? To what end? What did he get out of this? What what did he think the country was getting out of this? Joe Heck, Joe Heck, I really wasn't surprised. Joe Heck voted each time to increase the debt limit ceiling. He voted each time to 
gave in to the Democrats. You expect that from Joe Heck. Mark Amaday, once again, he followed suit in a long tradition with the people that Jim Gibbons, going all the way back when Dean Heller was a congressman in that area, he did not vote for this. You always had some good conservatives coming out of northern Nevada. So my question is, why do we want to continue to vote for these people? Why do we want to continue to put money in these people's campaigns, go to work for them? You know, they're great. They talk to you at the functions. But then, you know, lately they don't show up to the functions even anymore. Where are they at? They're absent. Colin talking about Mark Ham- uh, John Hammer, the Marine that was down in Mexico. I contacted Dean Heller's office. I contacted Harry Reid's office. I contacted Joe Heck. I contacted Mark Amade. Mark Amade, Joe Heck, both were helpful. They both, you know, at least you got lip surface out of them. Harry Reid, it was exactly what you thought it would be. It was, well, if they need help, they'll call this, call up Senator Reid and, you know, didn't want to be bothered. The most arrogant of all were the people at Dean Heller's office. And then Dean Heller comes out with this cockamamie excuse on why he voted for this that just is totally untrue. Where's the Republican Party going today? The Speaker, he wanted to, and he, the Speaker, every time he went out, they wanted to extend the debt limit, he extended it. What's going to happen at this month, at the end of this month, when we reach the ceiling again? We reach the debt limit ceiling at the end of this month. Are they going to kick it up again? Where are they going to stand up for us on the gun legislation that is going to be coming through. Where are these people going to be? Now, we worked for them. We gave them money. We voted for them. And we've done this time and time and time again. We expect them to stick up for us. They're Republicans. They're, they're our, our people. They're Republicans. They're conservatives, supposedly. Why did they cave in and crumble? There was no reason for this. It's time to speak out. Start calling up your representatives, telling them what you think. Why did they do this? I'd really like to know this. But as we lose more ground and we continue to go down and we continue to dig ourselves into a deeper hole, when are we going to come out of it? If we'd have gone over to Fiscal Cliff, it wouldn't have been that big of a deal. There would have been something shut down, but they could have passed the bill that would have said, hey, we're going to take care of the pay for our army. We're going to take care of our veterans. We're going to take care of our seniors on Social Security and Medicare. They could have passed the bill like that and said, we're not getting this. We're not just passing a bill to pass a bill. We're going to hammer this out. Now, two months from now, the thing that they did was temporary. In two months, they're going to come back and try and rehash this out. Believe me, it's not going to be done until seven and a half weeks from now. They're not even going to begin talking about it. Your new big kick for January, Joe Biden and uh, our good president, the current occupant of the White House, wants to go after gun control. That's what they're going to be talking about this month. Are we talking? Are we planning for what's going to happen in eight weeks? I don't think so. Are these guys going to stick with us and hold the line on the gun control? you got to wonder. We're going to have to go to our break, and we'll wrap it up right after this. Scoring touchdowns can leave you thirsty, but most drinks out there are high in calories and low in vitamins and minerals and lack a very important thing. The power behind the play. Milk from your local dairyman gives you that power. Low-fat and fat-free milk are naturally nutrient-rich, keeping you healthy and fit. So after the big touchdown, ask for quality, icy cold local milk from your local dairyman. It's the power behind the play. Visit DairyCouncilUTNV.org. Your car is radiator leaking? Does your cooling system need some attention? And with this economy, have you been putting it off? Not doing routine maintenance can end up costing you many more dollars down the road. So if it's been a while since you've had your car's cooling system serviced, or if you're looking for a real radiator shop that can answer your questions, then it's time to stop by Cool Radiator at 3228 Westmead Avenue and let Daryl have a look at your radiator. Daryl will be able to answer all of your questions and explain just how your cooling system works. 
The good folks at Cool Radiator understand your concerns and they can help. So stop stressing out and stop by Cool Radiator and get some of the small problems fixed before they turn into something major. That's Cool Radiator at 3228 Westmead Avenue, east of Valley View between Sahara and Dion. The phone lines are open. Call Peter now at 702-257-5396. Okay, I want to welcome everybody back to the show and want to thank everybody for calling in and going through this. Now, don't forget, they got some great things coming up. If you want to make a donation to Wounded Warriors, a couple of locations that you can go out, and this is going to be, this is a great thing that they're doing. They're collecting all of this money. You want to go out to um, Mr. D's, want to go out to the Second Amendment, Harley Davidson on Sahara and Rainbow, and Cole Radiator. Well, that's it for this week. Like I say, I want to thank everybody for calling in. We'll talk again next week. Just like it happened so many times before The spirit of the woods is like an old good friend Makes me feel warm and good inside I knew his name And it was good to see him again Cause in the wind He's still alive